Hello everybody, my name is Stefan and you're watching again a new episode of Developer Small Talk. And today I've got a friend with me, which is, who is? Gleb. Hello Gleb, how are you doing? Hi everyone, I'm doing great. How are you Stefan? Good, it's been a long day, but I'm really excited to talk about some end-to-end -end testing. End-to-end -end testing is easy and great, right? Everyone <laughs> loves it. Okay, so um, Gleb, who are you and what are you doing these days? So I'm Gleb, I live in Boston and uh, for almost a year, I've been uh, working for a small company called Cypress, and we've done and released open source MIT license free end-to-end -end test runner called Cypress. Not surprisingly, you can download it today. It's an open, you know, no beta, no restrictions. Just try it. It's a single electron-based app that can really revolutionize end-to-end -end testing. Cool. Yeah, I, I heard I heard good things about it. Let, let's quickly check check the website. So this is Cypress, right? Yes. Yes. The web has evolved. Evolved. Okay. <laughs> big, big statements here. Right. Right. Set up tests. Write tests. Run tests. Record. I'm really interested in how this works, by the way. So basically, it's, bu it's built in. It's built in. Okay. So and uh, can, could you quickly define what I, I see end to end testing here somewhere, right? Right. Could you quick, uh, quickly define what end-to-end -end testing is? So imagine a user using your website, you know, Stefan. The user would you know, open the browser, load the URL, and then look around. Yeah. That's exactly what end-to-end -end tester should simulate, right? Open a real browser, open a real website, and then make sure that you know, the elements are visible, the text comes in, that it works, that you can press a button. And then the end-to-end -end test runner should you know, finish its run and post results somewhere, either locally or you know, on CI, so you can see if anything failed. Cool. So it's basically testing the end result of our daily work, right? Exactly. You know, deployed website, deployed API service, not, not, none of it like little you know, add two numbers kind of unit test stuff. Got it. And my first question when I look at this is how does it work technically? Is it a, do you use a headless browser or is it or how does it work? So it uses your favorite technology, <laughs> Electron, right? So Electron is Node plus a browser, all in one package, in cross-platform package. So when you run Cypress, you are running an Electron app. That Electron app will load your website. Okay. And because it controls the browser, then it can actually see what's going on inside the website as it's loading. That means if you know you expect text to appear, it knows when the text appears. Uh, it can intercept every request from your website for itself as a proxy. That means it knows when your website fails to load something. Cool. And because it's an Electron app. Um, it yeah. can run everywhere on every platform, Linux, Mac, Windows. But this then also means that um, Cypress is limited to Chromium, right? So Cypress itself comes in with Electron built-in browser, mm -hmm. but it can control external Chromium-based browsers, Chrome, Canary, right? Mm -hmm. But the way it controls a separate browser, it loads an extension into the browser to get all the features so it can control it. Yeah. We are right now porting that extension to control Firefox. Ooh. So, so on, yeah, exactly. So we leave just with like the network Node.js layer, but we can control external browser by loading ourselves, you know, into that browser and controlling it. So we plan to support Firefox uh, in the nearest future. We are also talking to Edge team to see if we can control Edge the same way. This works with a remote protocol, some probably, or how does that work? Uh, it it avoids the remote protocol right now. So um, it used to be a huge open issue in Chrome, mm. for example. But if you use native events, that means you have to use like DevTools protocol, and that means uh. you could not use the DevTools, right? You could not have duplex commands going to the DevTools and to the browser. So they finally fixed it, and that means we'll have full native access. But right now, we're just using all the nat not, not native, but all the JavaScript APIs and Electron-based APIs to control everything. So it's uh, an implementation that's very different from Selenium. There is no web driver. There is nothing to install. It's much closer to, to your website. 
test runner than anything before. I'm sold. What, what, what do I have to do? <laughs> uh, so uh, I guess, yes, you, you see the command, right? So yeah. start a, a new project, you know, create package JSON. I will put it in my, in my project here. Okay. So it's, a, it's an PM module. Mm -hmm. After installing it, it downloads the actual Electron app that we built because it has to download a specific binary, just like Electron pre-built, you know, NPM module does it. So you see it now is downloading. Yeah. Uh, it's putting it in a node modules folder. So that means on CI, you should cache that folder so you avoid downloading over and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you see the beautiful progress indicators. <laughs> <laughs> These oh, are... We spend so much time on progress bars. It's not even funny. <laughs> I understand that. It's the tiny details that make, make someone happy, right? Exactly. Because you know if uh, the tiny details are right, but the team actually finished the big task and had time to polish it, right? Yeah. So it's subtle. but um, So it's... Uh, a bin program, right? So if you do like node modules, you know, bin Cypress, you should do that. Like it gives you the command. Like that? Oh, yeah, and type open. Looks good, nice colors and stuff. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, it noticed that you have not started Cypress before, right? You have no integration test, so it scaffolded a couple for you. So if you see that it scaffolded some fixtures, uh, integration folder with example spec file, that's a, a huge file that shows you a lot of functionality. And then you can also have plugins and you have support. So if you, for example, define custom commands, you can do it there. But for now, just uh, if you click OK, you can close this model. And so this is how you usually start. It shows like all the spec files in your, in your integration test. Why don't you click, um, oh, by the way, so you, uh, yeah, so it's actually open Chrome browser, right? Yeah. And um, so now it's controlling your Chrome and it's going through a bunch of tests that show different aspects of Cypress, what it can test. And, um, and it's a real test and you can see it, right? And it's running against Cypress. Okay, got it. Right. And um, it, it shows a lot of different functionality, but this is the main difference of, in Cypress versus everything else. Not only you see the website on the right, you see the actual test running on your left. That's right? really nice. Right. So can you like stop it, you know, by clicking the stop button because it, it will take, you know, like a minute to go through. So if you click on, yes, click on something like that, right? So this is an individual test, and you see what it has done. When you hover, it actually shows a dumb snapshot during that moment, right? Um, like, so, that, like that is real DOM in this state? Yes. This is yes. not an image or something? No, no, it's actually we take the whole DOM, right? So yes, it will run out of memory if you have a lot of tests and have a lot of steps, <laughs> okay. but you can control it. Uh, but you see with, like, which elements are highlighted, right? Yeah. Where it actually did something. Oh, well, that's so, really cool. Right. And you can see like before uh, you, it visited, you know, website and opened it. If you do like get, right, which is selector, yeah. it shows how many elements it grabbed in green. Um, it, uh, it actually shows um, assertions. Right. And see, like it says, printed output to your console. Yeah. Can you open DevTools for me? Like that? Like that. It's a full browser, right? So um, can you, yeah. So you, if you click on any assertion or any of the steps, it actually prints the full object there. Nice. So it, it pays off to know how to use DevTools because you have them. You know, you can interact with Cypress, you can see everything, and it's a real browser. Uh, but well, wait a second, now, I, now I'm looking at the dev tools. All right, we're, we're in Chrome, we are not in right. Electron right now. Uh -huh, got right, it. yes. Got so it. in, in Electron, it would be exactly the same thing, right? And Cypress itself is just a web app uh, that we load, right? So what you see on the left, uh, so if you click Stop, for example, 
uh, but big red button. See how it says Chrome 63? Yeah. Uh, it's a drop down, so you can switch to, you know, it found a couple of browsers. So, so these Electron are the browsers 50... of my system, yeah? Yes, yeah. So Electron 53 is the default where I usually run. Mm. Uh, but, you know, you can pick a browser that you want. Uh, the Electron browser is kind of behind times. We're waiting for the next major release. Yeah. Um, so it, as soon as that comes out, we'll upgrade to that Electron browser. But you disabled opening DevTools here in the Electron app, huh? Yeah, you, 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 you can do that. Mm, I, I'm pressing Command Alt I. It's. Uh, I think you disabled uh, it. No, it should be there. Um, uh, it's not uh, uh, under Window Help. Uh, not under Cypress. I thought there was uh, opening because I usually run it. No, it doesn't, weird. doesn't matter. Yeah. Cool. Okay. What you want to see? You want to write a couple of uh, tests for your website? Yeah. First of all, I've got another question. I can I can kill this here now, right? Yes. Yeah. Kill it. So and now I've got a bunch of new. Got it. Okay. So I've got a configuration file here. Let, yes. let, so, let me just snoop around a little bit here. Oh, it's going to be boring. It's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what goes in there usually? Okay. So uh, can you open Cypress again, and uh, and I'll show what uh, what's possible. Okay. Um, so. You can click on settings. You see on a, on the tab uh, configuration. So these mm. are all options that it has, and it show, in, it can highlight the, with different colors like which settings come from Cypress JSON file, which settings come from environment variables or CLI uh, arguments. So you can control all of that. You can even customize by loading a, in a plugin. But you can see there are a lot of options that you can set. Uh, you can control all sorts of you know, screenshots and videos and you know, base URL is the most important one. Nice. Um, so every option in here is also um, controllable via environment variable, is that correct? Exactly, yes. And that's what like, we use. For example, you see that option almost on the top, base URL? So usually you don't want to put your URL that you're testing in a spec file. Yeah. You, you, you would put maybe a default local one as a base URL in Cypress.json file. Yeah. But when you run tests on staging against staging server, you can pass either environment variable or command line argument and say, hey, the base URL is now like myserverstaging.com. Yeah. Okay. So you completely so build, you build it for CI in mind, right? Yes. We, we build it so you can run the test against a different implementation with a like, minimum hassle. Sounds sounds good. So okay. So let me snoop me snoop around a little bit more. Yeah. So what do we have? We've got an empty settings file. That's fine. Yes. Um, <laughs> these these are. These are, are not mine. Yeah, yeah. Not mine. <laughs> I'm I'm dirty in in dirty yeah. state here. Okay. So let's have a look here. So these are the files that you described initially, right? Right. Um, so I would say go to integration. That's the only one. But uh, okay. Let, let's go. Uh, you you have to worry. Okay. So. Like Let's little... Huh, where is it? Wait. Uh, are you in the right folder? Wait a second. Mm. Okay, let's quit that. Ah, no. Okay. Yeah, no, okay, that's it. Okay, so what do we have to do? Fixtures. So you can load different files if you need then the fixtures to, to like upload, ver verify. That's, that's all easy. Um, the, we just provide you an example. This is then data that is available in my test run. Right, right. Okay. And then we've got... Oh boy, this is the complete test that run, ran against Cypress? Exactly. Mm. That's, what, that's what you just saw, right? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like a good example of what you can do with lots of documentation. Um, I like that. that that's good onboarding. That's really, yes. Really, um, really cool. It's, it's going to be even better, right? So you, you use Visual Studio Com, uh, I mean, Visual Studio yeah. Editor, right? Yeah. Uh, so hover over, you see like that command, like site visit. 
For example, before each, we want to visit uh, the website, right? On line 35. Yeah. So Sci is the object that contains our whole API, yeah. like all the commands that Cypress can do. Yeah. Right now, it says it's undefined. It doesn't really show you anything. Yeah. Okay, he, here's a nice trick. Can you go to the top of a file? Have, I, have you ever used like references uh, to types in Visual Studio Code? No. Just, just, go, just go to the first line of this file, example spec. Now, can you enter three slashes and uh, like, right, space, a ang like open like angular, angular bracket? Like this one? Uh, no, like uh, like HTML. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, type references, uh, space, types, uh, equals Cypress, capital Cypress. Yeah. And then space, uh, you have to close it with a slash. Yeah. And save this. Uh, oh, no. The, it did not pick it up. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no, that's not right. Uh, not references, reference, singular. Okay. Uh, save it. And now, can you uh, hover over Psy, for example? Ooh. Holy. It's working. It's working. <laughs> hey, wait, is, is this a VS Code feature? What is this? I've never used uh, that. So people say that this is uh, like... Um, this code, but uh, I only got it to work in Atom, in TypeScript files. Yeah. All right. But I think this is coming to JavaScript, but don't quote me on that. But where's the... But where I'm glad that it's working. <laughs> we ship TypeScript definitions with Cypress. Yeah. And so this tells you that, that global Psy, right, you know, load types for Cypress module in what we just installed. So that's why it's working. Um, nice. Because we had real loaded globe. Yeah. L l let me quickly jump one folder back here. So, so mm -hmm. where's this defined now? In node, it, it's in the typings in the node modules. Yeah. Yes. So if you open node module Cypress, I know it's, you have a lot of modules. <laughs> yeah. Of we're we're doing JavaScript oh. here, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, ten megabytes. So uh, ten gigabytes. <laughs> Wait a second. How, okay, how, how it is it written? It is written. Oops. Cypress. C Y. Wait, I've got too many windows. Give me a second. So. C. Oh, it's right there. Right. It, yeah. Yes. So if you look at package.json, um, it has a property types. If you find types, more, more, more. Uh, okay, this one. So it just points at the folder types. And we, so we have index, which is Cypress its own types. And that's what you saw. And it also see references Mocha because all these tools are built into Cypress. So it ships with like, you know, uh, Chai and Chai jQuery and Lodash and Moment.js, which is not this, Sinon. So it actually comes with all bells and whistles there. And the the matching part, the matching name was this, yeah, the namespace. Yes. Yeah, so under this namespace, if you go to the very very bottom, it merges a whole bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. and it has exports global definition Sci and global definitions for Cypress. And like we we do our best to kind of describe all all commands and give examples. Yeah. But every every command also has a, a link to our documentation online that's my learning of the day that this works here man that, hey this is awesome Stefan, it's not it's not the only thing but unfortunately the other thing so you asked me about cypress.json yeah you you can install for visual studio code like a couple lines in your preferences and you can have intellisense for this file for cypress.json oh. how cool is that nice anyway uh, so you, now, you can do. Let, let's do that later, so that we can run an actual yeah, test. Yeah. You've got. <laughs> I have to check all the goodies, man. That's really cool. I, I'll, I'll send you the links. It's in our documentation as well. How to do IntelliSense in in JSON files, but nice. Okay, 
So, but let's check how we write a test, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, open Cypress because it will watch your files. So you can just like kind of see it and, and it will rerun when you modify anything. Okay. So, so I'm going back. You can do, yeah. And you have to help us, you know, kind of start Electron faster. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't written Electron code for a while, but <laughs> I can try. Okay, so. So now go to that example spec in your editor and maybe. Oops. Oh, no, I ran it, right? No. Yeah, you don't okay. have to run it. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just keep it open and let's start editing it. Cool. Um, so, I mean, Delete everything but uh, but that reference line. I mean, we don't need anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's write a test, and it's real. You know, your usual mocha syntax. You know, eat name. Oh, you can describe as well. Uh, so like it loads or something. Should load. I know. It, describe is always a subject. Yeah. Right? So like loading like, state or something. Yeah. And then it's a function, right? Like that? Yes. Yeah. And now you, you have to provide a single test, like it, like loads or something. Cool. And so uh, type, you know, site.visit. Like that's the command to actually visit a website. Man, the, <laughs> the completion is super nice now. Okay. Oh, uh, it's like the example. So just, yeah. Okay, save it and let's go to Cypress and like uh, see what it did. Okay, so click on example specs. Okay, so this initial pause, it actually uh, created a, like a certificate so it can proxy all requests to your website. That's what you, you just saw. Yeah. Uh, but the next, so it loads, uh, the test passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Right. You are an end-to-end -end tester. <laughs> Woohoo! How, do, how does that work? Is this this looks like it is synchronous now, but visiting visiting a website is purely asynchronous, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so the way it works, all these commands, sci visit, sci get, they are actually queuing up things to do mm -hmm. in, in the test runner. So then it executes visit, and then it will execute the next command from a queue, the next. So you write code that looks synchronous, mm. but in reality, it executes as, as a callback through event system. Mm. Vis uh, visit so waits for onload then or something. Not only it, yeah, not only it waits. Let's say your, like your server responds with like, you know, 400 or 500. Yeah. It, the visit command will check for the server response to be 200 for getting, you know, text HTML yeah. uh, type back for non zero content. You know, all the things that a user would do, right? Kind of are built in. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, if your server doesn't respond correctly, it will fail the test. Nice. Uh, for example, why don't you like maybe modify the URL so it's in incorrect? Uh, yeah, like something like that. So what happens there? Uh, where is the Chrome? Uh, can you switch to, instead of this, switch to Electron? Because I think it will be faster. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, well, they don't have. Got it. Okay, boom. See, like, beautiful uh, error messages. Uh, you see, like, um, on the left in the reporter, like, we received this error, right? And it tells, like, what's going on. You did, like, you don't have internet access. Like, we give you, like, what we think is wrong. So we try to be as helpful as possible. Cool. But you said this is refreshing. This means that I could actually work, yeah, go, go. work like that. Yeah. So I get rid of this one for a second. And now I, oh boy. Yeah, like uh, minimize that explorer open editors. So yeah. So, you know, change your website back to, so it's correct. Oh, I know. So we see like it's waiting for the whole thing to fire load event. Yeah. Um, uh, and you can control like, can, can you maybe minimize the reporter in, in Cypress so, because, so we see your website a little bit better. Well, you can drag here yeah, this thing. 
Okay, so let's say we load it, right? Yeah. Why don't we check that it actually show, like, shows, hey, I'm Stefan, right? Like, I think that's a pretty good test. Yeah. So, so what do you think it should be? Like, you know, just guess. Like, how would you Well, I would, would, would grab that? the H1 now and do a string comparison. Uh, okay, uh, we have a helper method mm -hmm. called uh, contains. So if you write like side, that contains, and you can give either text or like um, you know regular expression, but you know it, 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 you, you can also give selector like you did H one, yeah. so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, just stop H one. Yeah, and and then uh, text. So like that. Yeah. Yeah. You have to escape that. <laughs> oh, beauty of J. I develop. Yeah, just maybe a part of a, a string, right? Like. Uh, okay. So it's like it's clearly it's going to be there, or or the test would fail. Okay. Now, if you hover over the test, let, let command, me let me fail. For a yeah, yeah. Perfect. See, like. It it waits it waited for a couple seconds, right, for the text to appear. Yeah. So we like you said, everything on the internet is asynchronous. Yeah. That means you don't want to you know have flaky tests that fail if your website loads hundred milliseconds slower than normal. Yeah. So every command by default tries to redo itself, redo itself, redo itself for four seconds. And you can control it from, you know, through configuration in Cypress.json. Yeah, cool. So uh, wh why don't you fail again and I'll show you some cool things, right? Like I want to show you the error message. So four seconds and then it will fail. See, like it was trying to find content mm -hmm. within the selector, but never did. And so if you actually uh, open uh, uh, DevTools here, Right, and open the console. Yeah. And click on that assertion uh, that failed. Right. It, it shows the error. Mm. Right. And uh, usually, when, like, if you select something and then select contains, you know, inside, it will show the previous pattern so you can inspect everything much better. So, anyway, just it, it gives a lot of context. Nice. I think. Yeah, I think that that is really, really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's quickly jump to the. This is all the methods are on the documentation, right? Where is the documentation uh, here? Go to the docs. Yes. Yeah. And then. And. Uh, mm, yeah. Good. I assume you um, provide all the normal stuff. Click, go there, wait, all this. Yes. If you on on a, on a very very top, there is API uh, navigation, right? On the very top. Yeah. Okay, so you see the commands on the left. This is, you know, the commands that you have, and it's easy to write your own. But we provide a lot of stuff. So you use contains, right? Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you look up at contains? I just want to point something. Usually, every open source project suffers from, you know, bad documentation. Some projects have better documentation than others. Mm -hmm. So this is a command contains. Uh, not only we give you like examples, right? Like on the top and then correct and incorrect usage. If you keep scrolling, we give you, you know, best patterns, anti-patterns, arguments, examples, everything that we can come up with so that you have a better experience. And um, we invested literally like a quarter of our time before we actually open source Cypress into just writing documentation. And I think that's one of our strengths as a project is Create docs. Nice. So you don't have a documentation team? This is all written by engineers? Yeah. Like, who, who has time to supervise you know, the documentation team and tell them what to write? <laughs> I might as well write it. <laughs> fair, fair enough. OK, so cool. I, I think I could make my way through this by myself. But I read something about recording, right? Yes. So um, I'm ex what, how does that work? OK. Okay, so close Cypress, right? Like we have a task that's passing. Okay, close it. So uh, yeah. like that. Yeah, let's just kill it. So now do the same command, but instead of Cypress open, do Cypress run. So run. Okay. So this is the command that you would run normally 
on your CI or on your pre-commit hook, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, warnings from Visual Studio Code. Okay, that's it. Did finish recording? It just recorded your test. Wait. So you, wait. This thing here? Yeah, open it. It's a video. It's short, but. Okay, but it's this look, and when it loads, and when it finishes, maybe a little bit too quickly, right? The, the, the image loads, loads uh, asynchronously too. So the unload was yeah. already fired. Right. But the interesting thing about this is that, uh, let's say, uh, can you update your test to fail? And let's run it again. All right. Yeah, let's. Ah, uh, well, not, not open. Not, not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to run it. I mean, Cypress is good, but not that good. <laughs> So not only you you have um, in this case uh, uh, you know another video, but it will save a screenshot of a failure. So you know in most cases, on, especially on CI, you you will like okay. So you see like a screenshots that it took right with the name of a test. If you open that image, that sh that should show what's going on and what went wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh. It, you need to quote the name of a file because it has spaces. Nice. Okay. So right out of the box, every system, Windows, Linux, Mac, has recording and screenshots. And um, if I can you know, really quickly talk about things outside of a test run. Sure, go for it. So, you know, you, you see the process. Like right now, the way I work with any code is that I have Cypress open on one screen and and my you know VS Code open on my main screen, and I keep writing you know test the code, and I see it you know rerunning the test. So that's nice. And when I record it on CI, but then on CI, for example, if something fails, I have to go to artifacts and I have to find you know the screenshot, look at the video, and then I have to maybe go and see. Oh wait, how did how did it supposed to you know, work? What is the video from successful test run? Yeah. So there are a lot of things where individual test run is, is just a single data point, but you want to see how, how the history of all the test runs. You want to share the screenshots. You want to share the video. You want to see the test results. Yeah. So we build top of that, which right now is free service, but it will be paid for private projects. Hey, record my test run. Mm. And then from all the screenshots, all the test results, you know, there. And you have a central dashboard with all your videos, all your screenshots for failure, failures, and all the test results. So you, you don't have to think about it at all. So, so and this is the, this is then the paid part of Cypress, is that correct? It will be free for open source, yeah. right? For public projects and for private projects, it will be paid. But it's very, I mean, how much time do you spend like setting up your CIs and looking at failures and anything that makes it more productive? I, I think it's it's a good thing. So that's how Cypress will make money. We'll never put extra paid features into the test runner saying, hey, there is a pro version. No, we work on making the test runner as good as possible because we'll make money out of you know private companies doing something else with it. Yeah, it makes, makes sense. Cool. This was really, really, really nice. Let me just... uh, I, I hope you start testing everything uh, you know you do right now. <laughs> um, well, it looks good, feels good, and the split view and the Visual Code Studio Code typing stick, man, I have to check that out. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that you know I, I, I could you know show you our product. It's like our baby. <laughs> nice. Cool. And then, um, Gleb, uh, want to share any uh, Twitter handles or social stuff or something that people can shout questions at you? Uh, absolutely. So, um, you know, f find uh, Cypress at Cypress, you know, dot IO. Uh, we have Cypress dash IO Twitter handle and, uh, we have GitHub. So every, all our code is on GitHub publicly available. There are lots of issues. Uh, all the links are from our website. 
we have a GitHub channel where we support everyone and people ask questions and, and we chat. And, you know, if you want to, you know, scream at me personally, <laughs> my last name, Bakhmutov, B-A-H-M-U-T-O-V, on Twitter is also there. Uh, but um, Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, then thank you so much for, for 30 minutes of your time. I really enjoyed that. And yeah, we two talk on Twitter constantly anyways. And then I wish yes. you a really great day. Thank you. You have a great day. And everyone in the audience have a great day. <laughs> All right. See you around. Bye.